Hey, what's up guys and welcome to Xbox On. E3 is just around the corner, meaning that there are going to be an absolute ton of new games for us to play. Of course, there's already been so many amazing games this year, so we thought we'd take a look at the best games of 2017 that you need to play. Let's do this. Now, when you say online multiplayer to me, I think of military tech, finely tuned guns, and that sweet feeling of landing the perfect headshot, which makes For Honor, a multiplayer game that features none of these things, one of the biggest surprises of 2017. Ubisoft's Brawler winds back the clock to medieval times where giant warriors would smash each other's heads in with big pieces of metal until that head became detached from the body. Nice. But just because For Honor taps into a simpler time, it doesn't make it a simpler game. Whatever hero character you pick, you've got to learn a unique fighting style made up of loads of different moves and strategies. Spend 10 minutes with the Shogoki, the Ladi Samurai Warrior with the massive mace, and then switch to the nimble Peacekeeper who whittles away at health by stabbing rivals with a hidden dagger, and see how differently they play. You'd think you were playing two completely different games. What's really smart about For Honor is the way that it keeps us coming back with its seasonal structure. When you start playing, you join one of the three factions, and from this point, everything that you achieve in battle goes towards helping that faction slowly take over the map. The map you fight in changes to reflect who controls that territory on the world map, so it really feels like you're part of a bigger battle. Sadly, my faction and knights got absolutely trashed in the first season, so I'm hoping we do better this time round. If you watched Benny's recent interview with Xbox head Phil Spencer, you'll have seen Phil recommend Thimbleweed Park. What can I say? The man has good taste. This is a brilliant return to the glory days of point and click adventures, made by the guys who created such classics as Monkey Island and Maniac Mansion. As in those games, it's all about exploring, talking to freaky characters, picking up every random object you find, and trying to use those objects to solve obscure puzzles. When you find yourself trying to combine a character a fizzy drink with random parts of the scenery, you know you're in a point and click adventure. Of course, these kind of games are only ever as good as the story they tell. Thimbleweed Park is a gripping murder mystery that starts with a dead body in a river and soon expands to involve everything from circus curses to haunted hotels to mysterious inventors. You also play as five different characters, each with different abilities that are needed to solve different puzzles. Playing as a cop is very different to playing as a foul-mouthed clown or a ghost. I love how that last one has all the physical actions in the bottom left corner replaced with phantom powers. Can wailing and moaning help save the day? You'll have to play this excellent adventure to find out. Whenever a new Sniper Elite game comes out, all anyone wants to know is can I still make Nazi organs explode in slow motion? And of course, the answer is yes. The X-Ray Kill Cam is as gloriously nasty as it always has been, showing every cracking bone and exploding liver in bloody HD detail. But that's not the only reason to play Rebellion's Ace Sniping Sim. The scale of the fourth entry is massively improved from before, with each level dropping you into a huge sandbox area where you are free to sneak and snipe to your heart's content. The levels are so open to experimentation that it actually reminds me more of Metal Gear Solid, The Phantom Pain, than the previous Sniper Elite games, and that's high praise indeed. I love finding a high up point where I can look over the whole level and start pulling off sick long distance kills. In the first stage, you can even kill your final target from the opening of the level. It takes some skill, but I love that you have the freedom to do it. And if you ever get bored of being a lone sniper wolf, though I don't know how you can get bored of that, you can also play the game in co-op and there's also the amazing co-op survival mode where four friends hold off waves of attackers. If your Twitch shooting skills are not quite fast enough for the likes of Call of Duty, Sniper Elite 4 is a great place to have some fun, so why not take a look today? Sometimes you want something a little lighter from your games. They can't all be 100 hour epics or grim tales full of tough moral decisions. Sometimes you just want to explore a rainbow colored wonderland full of shiny doodads and comic characters. I'm clearly not the only one who thinks this, as Playtonic's ukulele was kickstarted by a huge group of fans hungry for similar action. The finished game delivers big on that promise. It's the kind of action platformer that used to rule the roost back in the N64 days. Of course, the formula is dragged into modern era with some gorgeous looks and 
a novel approach to level design that sees each world unfold into an even more challenging version once you've earned enough currency. If, like me, you loved picking over every nook and cranny to find thousands of collectibles, then the sudden sight of an even bigger level will fill you with awe. One thing, don't assume from the bright colours that this is kiddie fair. Some of the later challenges are surprisingly tough. Getting my ass kicked by some giant cartoon boss is not my proudest moment of the year, but it was good to dust off some of the old school platforming reflexes. I can't wait to see what Playtonic do next. The team at Xbox always said that a sequel to Halo Wars was the number one game fans would ask them about. Based on the fun I've had with Halo Wars 2, I think it was well worth the wait. For starters, it was great to continue the story of the first game, as the crew of the Spirit of Fire awake from a long journey to discover a new threat. This is told in some amazing cutscenes. Honestly, the CG work in these movies is so good that I would happily watch a whole movie made like this. Of course, it helps that the game that happens between the cutscenes is also really well done. The way complicated real-time strategy controls are mapped onto the controller means you can control an entire army with just a few button clicks, meaning the action can zip along with much more speed than your usual RTS game on console. Of course, if you still prefer mouse and keyboard, that's okay too, as Halo Wars is an Xbox Play Anywhere title, so you can play it on Windows 10 PCs as well. There's even a new Blitz mode that speeds up play even faster, removing all the building management to focus on throwing giant swarms of units at one another. These battles can be really intense with scarabs and airships appearing at the blink of an eye to rain death down on the battlefield. Even if you struggled with RTS games in the past, you'd be surprised how easy it is to command any army here. Do make sure to give it a go. While Benny murders his way through AAA blockbusters, I'm going to pick another indie oddity. The Sexy Brutale has to be one of the most original games I've played in years. You wake up in a strange casino trapped inside a time loop. To make matters worse, someone is murdering all the other guests, so you have to put your time traveling powers to good use. The game plays a bit like Hitman in reverse. Rather than trying to work out how to use the environment and everyone's routines to kill them, you have to try and save them instead. I won't give away any solutions here, but I absolutely loved the process of learning about each murder and trying out different solutions. By sticking your eye up to door locks, you can spy on other characters and learn secret tips that might help you change the course of fate. One of my favourite things about this game is the way that you constantly hear things happening elsewhere in the mansion that only make sense when you find a way into new rooms. Things that you write off as everyday sounds may actually be the result of other murders that you'll have to solve later. It sounds a bit ghoulish, but it gives the game a wicked sense of humour. I've been recommending this game to everyone and have yet to find someone who didn't enjoy its twisted story, so why not pay a visit yourself? Okay, so this next entry is cheating just a little bit as the game isn't technically out yet, though there are ways of playing it now, as Rare Sea of Thieves is currently running a technical alpha, which you can join by signing up to Rare's Insider program. We're not able to show our footage from the alpha, but we can say that we've been having a ton of fun testing the game out. If you're new to the game, it's a pirate themed online adventure where you join a crew, sail the sea and try to collect treasure before rival ships get to it. We've seen the game grow over for a few months from sailing around the world to fighting skeletons on islands as we try to steal their treasure. Of course, most sessions tend to end with us trying to rob other people or steal their boats while they are off collecting treasure. What's really impressed us is how quickly total strangers can become an effective crew. Once you work out how each part of the ship works, you just need to share out steering, navigation and combat duties and off you go. Whether that crew is quite so tight once your ship is sinking out at sea is another matter. We can't wait to see where Rare take the game next, so make sure you sign up for the Insider program so you can have a go as well. I'm usually a huge wuss when it comes to horror games, but Little Nightmares hit the exact level of scary that I can handle. It's the tale of a young child called Six as she tries to survive the twisted world of the moor. I'm not going to spoil what this place is actually about, but let's just say it isn't a day spa built for rest and relaxation. The game itself plays a lot like Limbo or Inside, full of platforming and physics puzzles. Unlike those games, the world is in full 3D, so it can also deliver some terrifying sequences where you hide from the monsters who run the moor. Trying to sprint under tables as a man with incredibly long arms snatches at you is truly nightmarish stuff, as is this scene in the kitchen when chefs with weirdly flappy faces will try and add you to their their foul 
Chow Soup. These encounters often play like level long boss fights, with the same enemies chasing you around large parts of the building before meeting a sticky end. In these scenes, it reminds me a bit of Roald Dahl's The Witches. It's all about helplessness in the face of twisted evil. I'd like to say that there's light at the end of the tunnel for Little Six, but I'm not sure that would be true. The only way to find out is to play the game today. Just don't get cross with me if you can't sleep afterwards. Prey is hard to pin down. It's got a bit of survival horror to it as you sneak around a space station not getting murdered by aliens. It has a touch of Deus Ex and the way you unlock loads of different powers that change how you approach any situation. Unlike Deus Ex, however, you learn skills by injecting them into your brain. I think we'll stick with old school textbooks. Thanks. Prey also reminds us of Bioshock in the way that you enter an amazing new world. In this case, it's a huge space station called Talos 1. You can not only explore every room on board the ship, but you can also leave via an airlock and have a look around outside. Of course, Prey has loads of cool ideas of its own. My current favourite is the Mimic ability, which lets you transform yourself into objects from the environment to squeeze through small gaps or hide from enemies. If you had told me at the start of the year that one of my gaming highlights of 2017 would be playing as a freaking mug, I would not have believed you. But here I am, exploring a space station from the safety of a cup. What a strange world we live in. Prey is relatively new, so I still get the feeling there's loads of secret stuff to discover. One player has already beaten the entire game in just 20 minutes, using lots of different tricks they found, but if you enjoy games that don't play by the rules and let you find your own solutions to their problems, then I would definitely recommend Prey. Just be warned, you'll never be able to look at a mug in the same way ever, ever again. What's that old saying? In space, no one can hear you snog. I think that's it. No game better captures the magic of intergalactic Netflix and chill than Mass Effect Andromeda. Okay, so it's also about trying to build mankind a new home in a hostile alien galaxy, but for long-term fans of the series, it's just good to be romancing those amazing Bioware characters. Andromeda is a very different proposition to the original trilogy. It revolves around a handful of large open-world planets packed with side missions rather than the more linear areas of the original games. Some people found these new worlds a tad baggy, but I think it gives a better sense of being a huge alien landscape. There's a genuine sense of adventure in spotting an interesting lump in the horizon and then tearing your way over there in your trusty nomad to discover what it is. As you finish more missions, you gradually tame the environment, meaning more settlers can move in, bringing even more side missions with them. Needless to say, if you like side missions, you will like Andromeda. And the series combat has never been better. Our new heroes, you choose from a brother or sister, are equipped with jetpacks that let you dash in and out of cover or launch into the air to spray bullets down below. Start mixing in some flashy biotic powers and it begins to feel like a proper action game rather than a stodgy space RPG. And even if you fail to connect with all that other stuff, you're still left with another epic tale full of twisted alien baddies, strange new allies and some space magic stuff that I didn't completely understand. Oh, and that all important space nookie. Don't forget the space nookie. Now, if you saw our Ghost Recon Wildlands episode of World's Hardest Achievements, you'll know that I didn't play it like a member of an elite military force, but this doesn't mean I didn't have huge fun with the game. Where Ghost Recon games are usually very technical and serious, Wildlands gives it a bit more fun by bringing the action into the open world. Yes, you are still a member of an elite squad of agents, but you can also choose to do missions from the back of a tractor. No one is judging you here. While you can play the game by yourself, Wildlands really comes alive for me when I'm in a squad with friends and we're coordinating our actions and bringing down enemy outposts from four different angles at once. Whether that's having four snipers perfectly timing their shots or sending in your mates to check things out while you keep an eye on them with the drone, it really is up to you. It's an absolutely massive world too, the biggest that Ubisoft has ever made, and you are totally free to tackle it however you want. Going after some of the strongest enemies in the game right at the start probably isn't the best thing to do, but it's great that you have the option to do it. 2017 has loads of huge open world games on the horizon, including Crackdown 3, Red Dead Redemption 2, so why not get practicing now in Wildlands Bolivia? 
We've played some amazing games this year, but the one which got the whole of Team Xbox on talking and shrieking was Resident Evil 7. Having transformed into a full-on action blockbuster in Resident Evil 6, Capcom took the series back to basics. It's just you, a spooky old house, and the freaks that call it home. In this case, the freaks are the Baker family, a gang of psychotic rednecks who live deep in a swamp, eat ambiguous meats for dinner, and have the nasty habit of recovering from just about any physical attack you throw at them. To reveal any more about the family would spoil a great story that is expertly served up over the course of 10 hours. If you were concerned that the shift to first person was going to see Resi turn into a dumb shooter, have no fear. Or rather, have loads of fear. The first person view means you really feel the intensity of every situation. Monsters get in your face, you find yourself cowering behind your hands, and you're constantly having the rug pulled out from under you. The first person perspective also allows for some amazing sequences where you play previous events as a series of VHS recordings. Here you get to uncover the backstory and get some subtle hints on how to survive the horrors to come. It's a brilliantly made game, packed with memorable characters, regular scares, and some nerdy nods for the fans. And once you've done with the campaign, there's also fun to be had with the DLC, including a truly bizarre add-on where you have to feed Jack Baker endless food as part of his birthday party. Resident Evil 2 famously let us play as a lump of tofu, so it's great that Capcom still has its sense of weird. As for us, we were just happy to make it through the ordeal without dying of a heart attack. Have you got the nerves to survive the Baker Mansion? You owe it to yourself to find out. So there we have it, some of the best games of 2017 so far. Let us know in the comments what your favourites are ahead of E3. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos. And make sure to smash that like button if you enjoyed this video and to check out last week's list show whilst you're at it. We'll see you next time. Bye! Bye.